Welcome to Hebraic Insights in the Gospels. Join us every Sabbath on Zion Road Radio for a look at the life, deeds, and words of Yeshua Messiah and his followers. From the Torah-centric Hebraic perspective, they were originally lived and written in. Today's program is on Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through verse 32. How is the way Messiah recruits people into his ministry different than how the world does it? Were the disciples called to follow Messiah because they were more righteous than everyone else? Do you have to be well-educated, super-qualified, or more righteous than everyone you're ministering to in order to be called by Messiah? What is Messiah looking for in those who he calls to follow him? What do you need to do in order to be used by Messiah and succeed in following his plan for your calling? Stay tuned throughout this program for Eliyahu Ben David's insight on these questions in Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through verse 32. And now, here's today's scripture reading. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through verse 32. Now it happened, while the multitude pressed on him, that is Yeshua, and heard the word of Elohim, that he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He entered into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. He sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered him, Master, we worked all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the net. When they had done this, they caught a great multitude of fish, and their net was breaking. They beckoned to their partners in the other boat that they should come and help them. They came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But Simon Peter, when he saw it, fell down at Yeshua's knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, Lord. For he was amazed, and all who were with him at the catch of fish which they had caught. And so also were Jacob and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Yeshua said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people alive. When they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. It happened while he was in one of the cities. Behold, there was a man full of leprosy. When he saw Yeshua, he fell on his face and begged him, saying, Lord, if you want to, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I want to. Be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him. He commanded him to tell no one. But go your way and show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing according to what Moses commanded for a testimony to them. But the report concerning him spread much more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. But he withdrew himself into the desert and prayed. It happened on one of those days that he was teaching, and there were Pharisees and teachers of the Torah sitting by, who had come out of every village of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. The power of Adonai was with him to heal them. 
Behold, men brought a paralyzed man on a cot, and they sought to bring him in to lay him before Yeshua. Not finding a way to bring him in because of the multitude, they went up to the housetop and let him down through the tiles with his cot into the midst before Yeshua. Seeing their faith, he said to them, Man, your sins are forgiven you. The scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this that speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but Elohim alone? But Yeshua, perceiving their thoughts, answered them, Why are you reasoning so in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, Arise and walk? but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, arise and take up your cot and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them and took up that which he was laying on and departed to his house, glorifying Elohim. Amazement took hold on all, and they glorified Elohim. They were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. After these things, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office and said to him, Follow me. He left everything and rose up and followed him. Levi made a great feast for him in his house. There was a great crowd of tax collectors and others who were reclining with them. Their scribes and the Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? Yeshua answered them, Those who are healthy have no need for a physician, but those who are sick do. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners, to repentance. And now, here's Eliyahu ben David with insight on that portion. Stand at the crossroads and look Ask for the ancient paths Ask where the good way is And walk in it And you'll find rest for your soul Shalom, friends. Here we are in Luke 5, 1 through 32. And our theme is they left everything and followed him. You know, when you read the stories in the scriptures, it can get kind of old and you can sort of not get what you're reading. But to the people who lived back there, to the friends and relatives, it seemed very strange that a young man would leave the family carpentry business to go off and be an itinerant preacher with what looked like no future, no place even to lay his head. And what about those people that followed him? Perhaps to some they looked like fools, They had a going fishing business, and they just left their boats on the shore and walked off to follow him. Really very, very different from what we expect from people. And why is that? Well, I thought we could just kind of play a little role-playing game And basically, I'm kind of a recruiter. I'm like working for the ministry as a recruiter, and you've just been hired to be recruiters, and I got to teach you. So that's what's happening here. 
And we have some recruiting tips for hiring apostles. So let's look into that. You see, our ministry needs some top level apostles to promote our growth. And it's your job to recruit them. So let's look at some of the do's and don'ts of recruiting apostles. We have some examples from one of our well-known recruiters. This is recruiting example number one. Now, this is the report I got from the field. I'm not sure it's 100% accurate, but I think it's a good example, so I'm going to read it. Okay. This is our talking about our recruiter. It says, when he'd finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered him, Master, we worked all night and took nothing, but at your word I'll let down the net. When they'd done this, they caught a great multitude of fish, and their net was breaking. They beckoned to their partners in the other boat that they should come and help them. They came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. Now let's analyze what was done here and see what we can learn from it. This is a great example. Now remember, always impress new recruits with how special our ministry is compared to all the other ministries. Did you notice how our recruiter did that? Top-notch work. And you see, that way, they're definitely going to want to come on board with us because they'll know we're the best. Well, let's see what else happened here. But Simon Peter, when he saw it, fell down at Yeshua's knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, Lord. For he was amazed, and all who were with him at the catch of fish what they had caught, and so also were Jacob and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Hmm. There's uh, a problem here. This candidate clearly was not properly screened before this interview. <gasps> Let's see how the recruiter turns this problem around. Yeshua said to Simon, Too bad you're all such sinners. I was going to make you all apostles. But bringing sinners on board would make my ministry look bad. So, of course, Simon and the other guys said, Sorry, I mentioned it, dude, and kind of hid in the bottom of their boats under the fish. And after that, Yeshua continued looking for the perfect candidate. At least this is how I heard it. So this was a good job. We want top recruits, not losers like this guy. Where is this guy's confidence? He clearly has no confidence in himself, and having a guy like that on board would make us look bad. So this is a great example. If this happens to you, kick these people out the door. All right, now let's move on. All right, let's see what happens with another candidate. This is recruiting example number two. Let's check this one out. I hope we have better luck with this one. After these things, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office and said to him, follow me. He left everything and rose up and followed him. Well... Do you see that? Our recruiter saw that this guy was a top candidate. 
as a tax collector, obviously very well connected with a lot of influence in the community. Everybody was afraid of him, had clout to get things done. So, of course, the recruiter wasted no time in bringing this guy on board. Well, let's see what else happened. Levi made a great feast for him in his house. There was a great crowd of tax collectors and others who were reclining with them. Now, watch and learn, friends. This is a very shrewd move. Our recruiter knew that top candidates hang with other influential people. Did you get that? So getting his new candidate, his new recruit actually, to throw a feast was a perfect way to snag some of his friend tax collectors. And besides that, being tax collectors and, you know, kind of skimming off the top, they have plenty that they can donate into the ministry. <laughs> These guys have everything you want, right? Great job here. Great job here. Okay, let's see what happened next here. Okay, their scribes and the Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors? And sinners? Oh, wait a minute. I think we, maybe we have a problem here after all. Oh, no. Our recruiter fell into a trap here. Though influential, his candidate is not well thought of by the more important people. So, Unfortunately, despite all the other advantages, he'll have to get rid of this guy. Let's see how he does it. Okay. Yeshua answered, those who are healthy have no need for a physician, but those who are sick do. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners? To repentance? Uh-oh. That can't be right. Can you believe he said that? Those religious people are never going to accept that. So, this ministry is done, and you're all fired. <laughs> well, kind of fun, wasn't it? The whole idea here is to show really how different Yeshua is from the way this world is. Everything about it is different, isn't it? You know, today there are big ministries that hire specialists to come into their ministry, and they set them up like a big corporation, interviewing people, to come and work in their ministry. And of course, they want the most qualified people. They hire from seminaries and colleges and so on. Exactly what Yeshua didn't do. And they build very successful ministry businesses. What they don't build is the kingdom of Yeshua. That's unfortunately what the case is. So let's look at what Messiah actually did, and let's see if we can see what he's thinking and how he did things differently than the world does them. We have Simon Peter here. When he sees this amazing miracle that Yeshua did, he falls down on his knees and he says, depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, Lord. You know, when people go for an interview, they're always very reluctant to admit 
any problems. I saw an interview of a prominent person recently on 60 Minutes, and they asked him, essentially, what do you think your worst mistake has been? And he found something totally innocuous that wouldn't offend anybody to give as an answer. Do you know why people do that? It's not just pride. It's because the way the world works, many, many times, if you identify some weakness that you have had, then the business that hires you, if they hire you or whoever you're dealing with, will take those things and use them against you. Anybody here ever see that happen? I certainly have seen it happen. So people don't do that. Not very often are they just honest to say the truth. And yet Simon Peter, he was not maintaining any pretenses because he saw that he was in the presence of something bigger than that. And he just had an honest heart, truthful person. And yeah, he was a sinful man. And basically he's saying, I'm not worthy. Isn't that what he's saying? I'm not worthy. And apparently his partners thought the same thing. So Yeshua said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people alive. Turns out Yeshua is looking for people just like that. Why? Well, because he's looking for honest people. He's looking for people that care more about the truth than they do how other people see them. He's looking for people who have humility. And he can work with people like that. So Simon and his friends passed the most important test. Now you might wonder, well, why is that so important? I mean, aren't qualifications more important? Shouldn't he be looking for people who are highly intelligent, who have great education, have connections in the community, have something to bring to their mission? Apparently, he didn't care about that. You know why? It's because he doesn't need any of that. All he needs is a person who is humble, who will trust him. You know, this is what we worry about sometimes. If, if you're called into the ministry, you might feel so much like Simon that, in fact, you might not step up. You might think, well, I'm not worthy. And you've got a list of reasons in your head why you're not worthy. And you know what? You're right. You're not worthy. However, there are no worthy candidates. This is the problem. You're just as worthy as anybody else because we're all sinners. None of us are worthy. So is that an issue? It's not an issue to Yeshua. not an issue. And what about somebody that can do it better than you? Well, there probably are people, whatever job it is, that can do it better than you. I know a lot of the stuff I do, there's other people that can do it better than me. But he asked me and I came. When he asked them, they all had other things that were more important to them. So I'm doing it, and they're not. And I think I won that one. So I'm happy with that. 
You know, you don't have to compare yourself with other people. If Messiah calls you, it's not about other people. It's just about you and him. You're presented with an opportunity. Will you take it? Will you come? Will you answer? See, that's the other thing. Will you recognize it for what it is? Well, look what they did. They're presented with this opportunity, and they left everything and followed him. So that's another thing about them and what he's looking for. Someone who will be willing to give everything when called upon to follow him. And you know what? There aren't that many people that will do that. Most people want to have a plan B. You know, just in case, a plan B. Did these guys have a plan B? They were all in. No plan B. Because they weren't planning on ever doing anything else. And that's really where we need to be. You know, when that's where you are, you're totally dependent on him, right? And as a disciple, that's exactly where you want to be. Because as long as you can depend on yourself and on your own resources, it will be so much harder for you to depend on him. So really, to commit everything and follow him is really the road to success. So, you know, these fishermen, turns out they were pretty smart. And they saw the opportunity, and they took it. Well, then we have the tax collector, Levi. This one is really amazing, I think, because tax collectors were hated. And I should add, for good reason. You know, this Levi guy was probably not a nice person. Not when Yeshua found him. Because... At that time, and probably this time in a lot of places, what tax collectors did is they collected more than the actual tax so they could skim some of it off for themselves, and they made themselves very wealthy doing that. And, of course, that was very hard on the common people. So Levi probably was not a very nice person. And yet, Yeshua saw something in him where he invited him to follow him. Now, it doesn't tell us about that, but my thought is that maybe this tax collector was kind of disgusted with himself. Maybe he felt like he got caught in this thing and now he couldn't get out. And maybe he didn't like everybody hating him. Maybe he didn't like living that kind of a life. But isn't that what Yeshua does? You know, he sees our hearts. And it doesn't matter who we are. You might be the most hated person around. But he might see something in your heart where he will call you. And... If that happens, respond. Step forward. Because you might not be able to change your situation, change your life, but he can do it. He can change your life. So Levi took advantage of the situation. He could see a good deal when he saw one. And he left everything, and he rose up, and he followed Yeshua. 
And you know what? <laughs> he was so blessed by this that he put on this big feast and invited people to come, other tax collectors, other people. And elsewhere, it tells us that he gave back everything he'd stolen from people. He saw this as an opportunity to help other people see what a tremendous opportunity this truly was to follow the Messiah. Did he repent? Totally. You know, it's interesting. In this case, Yeshua didn't ask him to repent. Just being asked to follow Yeshua caused him to repent and do all this. He didn't want to go into his new life carrying all that baggage. So he did everything he could do to release himself of all that by giving all that back. Pretty amazing. The scribes and Pharisees murmured against the disciples, no doubt against Levi, and saying, why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? You know, if you have responded to Yeshua Messiah, you are perfect in him. Do you feel perfect? You know, this is the thing, that our minds lie to us, they play back all the old tapes from people accusing us. From Satan accusing us. Saying, oh, you're not worth anything. You did this wrong. You did that wrong. You're this kind of person. You're that kind of person. You'll never amount to anything. On and on and on and on. And you know, other people, they've got a list. They all have a list of all your sins that you've done to them all the bad things you ever did. And you can't change because they won't let you change, right? You've got to be that person that fits in the little cubby hole that they've got for you. Well, guess what? Yeshua has blown up that cubby hole all to hell. The cubby hole is now gone. And it doesn't matter if the religious people point their finger at you and they say, you're this, you're this, you're that. You can't be anything. You can't belong to God. Yeshua came to tell you, you can belong to God. And he came to reclaim you to reclaim your life, to make you a new person. All those people, they see the past and all the things in the past that they use to condemn you. Yeshua sees what you can be in him in the future. And he treats you as that person, the person you're meant to be in him. He has eyes to see. So, you know, we all have this choice. Either we're going to live in the cubbyhole that the people have for us, or we're just going to reject that. And Move on to be that person that Messiah has called us to be. I think it's pretty cool how Levi did that. I think it's pretty special because, you know, a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people are presented with that opportunity, but they just can't believe it. And they just don't accept it. 
Levi was exceptional because he did believe it, and he did accept it, and he allowed Yeshua to change his life. I've not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. You know, I think this leaves out a few words. I think what it actually says is, I've not come to call those who think they're righteous. Because nobody's righteous in themselves, are they? But there are those self-righteous people, and I think that's what he's talking about, people like the Pharisees. He didn't come to call those people because they're not coming. Not as long as they remain like that. But sinners can repent. And he came to call them. So here's a few thoughts that I pulled out of this on how to be used by Messiah. The first thing is, remember, nobody is worthy. So this can be a very big issue if you're called for some work, whatever it might be, by Yeshua. This is a big stumbling block to a lot of people thinking, well, I'm not worthy. Remember that nobody is worthy except Yeshua. And so therefore, it's not an issue, is it? The issue is, you're being called, are you going to answer? That's the only issue. The next thing is, come when you are called. It's not rocket science. However, it is difficult for people. I'm not so sure about this. I mean, you know, it's just strange about people the difficulty some people have of receiving something. You know, have you ever, you've wanted to give a gift to somebody and they say, oh, no, no, I can't take that. I'm not going to take that. They have trouble receiving. Here's the way you want to be. I'll take that. Thank you. We want to take what Messiah wants to give us. The very first step is when he calls you to come. You know, the apostles, when they left the boats, when they left the, their life, whatever it was, they didn't know what they were going to get. They just knew if they followed him, it was going to be good. That's been my experience. And so I want to receive whatever he wants to give me. The answer is yes. The answer, now write this down. The answer to Messiah is always yes. Did you get that? The answer to Messiah is always yes. The next thing is leave everything. This is very simple because there's nothing you have that even comes close to having him. So this isn't even hard. Just let it all go. It's very simple. And then give everything you've got to give. The best thing that can happen to any of us is that we can be completely, totally consumed and burned up by our service to Yeshua Messiah. That's the best thing that can happen to you. And you know, as you give everything, <laughs> what you're going to find is there is such a flow through of his spirit that you never are burned up. It's really the answer to being burned up. But you have to try it in order to know it. And then it's like discovering one of the secrets of the universe, you know. Really cool thing. Trust him completely. Now, here's the thing about Messiah. 
I'm, and I don't know how people read the Gospels and they don't get this, but Messiah is totally counterintuitive to our fallen nature. So what you find when he says, follow me, and then you do, is that he surprises you. He does things you will not expect. And you'll be tempted to say, well, that doesn't seem right. I think we should do it this way. No, 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 no. Your own way is not the way to follow him. You have to trust him completely. Go where he's going. That's the way to be a follower of Yeshua. And nothing else really works. Now, you probably will try all this stuff. I know I have at various times in my life. And it's never worked out. Because he knows better. And he's right. He is absolutely radical, you know. Sometimes what happens with normal people, they don't mind telling a little fib to make themselves look a little better. You know, they kind of bend the rules a little bit from time to time to get along, you know, kind of go along to get along. Messiah never does that. I'm saying never does that. He stands in the truth 100%, 100% of the time. And sometimes that's uncomfortable. It's not easy following him. You know, as you read through the Gospels to see what these poor men experience. It wasn't always easy for these guys. You know, they were dealing with something other than what they were. But fortunately, they were completely hooked. And I think that's what you find when you meet Yeshua Messiah. If you're like them, you're completely hooked on him. And wherever he's going, you're going to want to follow him because you can't really do anything else. It's like he becomes so important to you and to your life that there really is nothing else but him. That's where all of these apostles ended up except, of course, for the betrayer, and none of us want to end up where he ended up. But they all ended up following Yeshua no matter where he went. And they have an amazing testimony. Any one of them, if you follow it through, they were completely changed. They became the person. Each of them became the person that Yeshua knew they could be. You know, that's what's happening to us as we keep walking with him. Other people see it, you know, better than we do as individuals. Other people can see the changes. Other believers I'm talking about. They can see how you're changing, how you're becoming more like Messiah. Sometimes we don't really see it so much, but it's happening. It really is happening, and it's an amazing thing. Now, we're all going to be challenged with some of these things because these are big things we're talking about. And many times it's a matter of growth. But this brings us to the last point. Remember, quitters get nothing. So don't quit. You know, what a shame it is to go through all these steps only to decide in the end that you love the world more than you love him. This happens to people. We have the example of Demas, who 
left the path because he loved the present world. Sometimes the world can be very enticing. It looks like there's things out there that we want. But the world is passing away, friends. And Yeshua has something better, something beyond this world. So whatever you do, be an overcomer. Don't quit. Stick with it. You know, even if you fail sometimes, you fall down, pick yourself back up again, look to Yeshua Messiah to help you, and keep going. As long as you keep going, you're winning. It's if you listen to those negative messages and you quit, that's where the enemy gets you. So just don't quit. Follow him no matter what. They left everything and followed him. You have been listening to Hebraic Insights in the Gospels. Further teachings and study materials on ministry, serving Yeshua, the authority structure and holy order of Messiah's kingdom, the real history of how Christianity is a schism away from the kingdom that Messiah established when he came, the role of the twelve disciples in the kingdom of Israel, during Messiah's day and after he ascended to heaven, the history of the spiritual war throughout the scriptures, spiritual warfare, how to be an overcomer, the disciples, the apostle Paul, and God's big picture plan for this generation, along with many other related topics, can all be found at our membership site, Zion Tabernacle. Sign up is free. Just go to Zion.net. That's T S I Y O N dot N E T. New programs on the Gospels will be airing every Sabbath on Zion Road Radio. Tune in next Shabbat to learn more Hebraic insights in the Gospels. Shabbat Shalom! The Christian church system has claimed that Israel is cast off and done away with. However, Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 35 through verse 37 says, Thus says Yahweh, who gives the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. Yahweh of hosts is his name. If these ordinances depart from before me, says Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus says Yahweh, if heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, then will I also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, says Yahweh. The sun is still here. The sea still roars, and the stars still shine. Learn how Yahweh's nation Israel is literally written in the stars as a permanent testimony of our God's commitment to His covenant with Israel. Visit our community site, Zion Tabernacle, and sign up as a free member to view Eliyahu ben David's seminar entitled, One Nation Written in the Stars. Now available free of charge as part of Zion Fast Track, our introductory video course. Zion Fast Track will give you the big picture of what God is doing with His remnant nation in this very generation. 
To sign up and learn more about what other free resources you'll get as a Zion Tabernacle member, go to zion.org and click Join Us. That's T S I Y O N dot O R G. Then click Join Us. <laughs>